video and in today's video I want to explain to you guys in a full detail how inflation as well as interest rate the season works where it came from so that you can understand exactly how it works and how it affects the stock market as well as the dollar index now if you are new to the channel this sub would be appreciated as I provide valuable educational content on a daily basis and if you enjoy the video a thumbs up would be appreciated there as well now if you follow my breakdowns that I did yesterday for the Nasdaq uh, European sitting in nice profits on the Nasdaq the US 30 the Dow Jones if you did not check out my video uh, yet, you can just check out yesterday's video as there is more, uh, you know, opportunities coming in the market for these next moves. Um, and then, so someone had asked me, can you please explain to us how this works? And I said, you know what, I will do just that for you. Now, in order to explain this, we need to understand where it all started, right? Now, let me take you to it. Let me take you down a trip in 2019 sorry now if anyone remembers we had the coronavirus that came through right so during the coronavirus pandemic the federal reserve allowed interest rates to drop to a massive zero okay so when the interest rates sorry when the pandemic had struck uh, what the federal reserve did the feds went um, so we had the corona uh, you know when the coronavirus came you know, the feds was like, okay, cool. Now, we, what we're going to do is, is we're going to drop the interest rates to almost to zero, right? So interest rates dropped to almost zero because of the pandemic. Now, and then as the economy then came to a complete halt, businesses shuttered and millions of workers were left unemployed. So you guys know a lot of people has left their jobs, well, not left their jobs, but they got fired um, because businesses could not operate and because of that, they could not make any money. Understand? Good. Now, to aid companies and individuals in adjusting to the economic shock, basically what the government did was to spend trillions of dollars in stimulus measures basically because of the massive knock that the economy has taken what happened was you probably know that there was a uh, powell there was a uh, you know there was this uh, the gift of powell printing all this money um out there as well but there's there were a few places to go and spend money out there as well now millions of American people basically watch their savings pile up because the thing is American people couldn't go out to spend their money and as a result of that all their money started just piling up there so they didn't have anything to do so the money just started you know people who still uh, made an income through money that they received even after they were not working uh, people's savings started to skyrocket but basically you know went up because they couldn't spend the money. And then as the U.S. economy began to open, a demand for products and services increased. Why? Well, that is self-spoken. So think of it in this way. You are sitting in your house, right? You can't go anywhere, right? I'm just going to say that is your house. You are sitting in your house, firstly, right? That is your house. Um, I mean, this is how we used to draw houses, uh, you know, back in the days. So let's assume this is your house, right? So this is a couple houses, right? houses and homes is so you are sitting in your house and there is a shop out there right and you want to go to the shop and you want to spend your money but you can't why because there is a virus outside waiting for you to come out so that you know this virus is basically there so you have to get through the virus to go to the shop everybody the whole neighborhood over here you have to go to the shop you know but because you can't go out the virus you know, because of the virus, you can't go out. And everyone else in your street, they also don't want to leave their houses. And they're sitting with that money. And every month, they just get a little bit of money in. And that money starts growing and growing and growing. Next thing you know, everybody's sitting with a whole lot of money. But they can't leave their houses because they can't get to this. Because this coronavirus guy is blocking their route to go to the shops and spend their money. So what happens was, at the, after a couple of months, this guy disappeared. Now everybody in your road has had a lot of money and everybody comes at the same time and they all want to go and spend their money. And as a result of that, the demand for products and services increased. Because of Americans who had been under lockdown, they wanted to go out 
eat, shop and travel, repress demand and unresolve supply chains issues, then automatically send the prices higher. Then on top of that, the war in Ukraine once more jolted the world economy and the cost of oil prices then increased with that as well. Now, if you remember, the prices of oil skyrocketed to almost $130 a barrel, which further says prices, uh, who, which further added more fuel to the inflation. Now, not only had U.S. consumers had to deal with uh, increase in food prices, but they also had to deal with increase in oil prices. Now, as a result of that, what happened? So... The dollar index increased because of all of these people that came out and just started spending their money, meaning that more money comes in. And we obviously saw that because of interest rates being so low, people are spending because rates are so low. It's cheap. It's men. I can go make a loan, low interest rate, and everybody started accumulating. And you can use that same principle and you can basically apply it to South Africa as well. So basically what had happened, when interest rates were low, everybody went to the bank and says, I'd like to get a loan, interest rates are low. And next guy come, I want to get a loan, interest rates are low. Now, remember, throughout the pandemic, the stock market were quite uh, bullish, right? Well, it was bearish at first because people were not spending any money. But as the economy recovered, people started spending a lot of money in the market over here as well. So people started spending all of this money and then boom. But now, you know, we are back to square one once again there as well. Now coming back here, people started spending a lot of money because interest rates were low. But now the problem was because of the consumer spending index that had increased, that led people, you know, to, to spend all their money, so much money all the time that inflation started increasing. People, the consumer spending index increased. Now, the consumer spending in index, sorry, measures the, you know, uh, a, a, you know, measures what consumers are spending on a basket of goods and services, you know, on a month-to-month -month basis. And as a result of that, you know, because people are continuing to spend money, um, you know, inflation started increasing. And inflation is now sitting at 9.1%. Uh, now, the only way to bring inflation down is to do what? Is to reverse this entire process. What process is that? The first, the process that started the inflation in the first place. Inflation was triggered by low interest rates. Low interest rates encourage consumers to go out and spend a lot more money. Now, in order to cool down the economy, the Federal Reserve needs to bring down, sorry, needs to take up the interest rates first and that will encourage consumers to spend less. But with that comes another problem. And what do you think is that problem? Consumers are sitting with a lot of debt at the moment. Hiking interest rates, meaning that they will now need to pay more money on that loan that they took out with a 0% interest rates. And as a result of that, they fall deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper into debt. That ultimately leads to people taking on more jobs. And when you take on more jobs, a lot of people might find themselves being overworked or whatever the case is. And some might go like, you know, I'm not going to do this any longer. I'm just going to leave. That leads to a housing market crash because people can't pay back their own bonds. Everyone's surrendering their bonds. I can't do this anymore. That leads to a market crash. And not just for the dollar index, sorry, not just for the DX, uh, why? But for the stock market. Why? Because the stock market would not be making any money um, because all companies listed on the stock market makes money through rendering a service to consumers. And if consumers are not spending, they're not making money. And if they're not making money, they could then fire people. And that's just how the market would tumbling down. Now, let's go and look at this very quickly. So we know that the, you know, the, the, you know, the, the, the 528,000 jobs that came through, um, you know, and just to take you guys over this article here. So it says, you not only is 528,000 a big number in context of the last few months, it's a blockbuster number compared to what we would have in pre-pandemic. Basically what he's saying is we've never saw a, hum a number as high as this 
pre-pandemic because if we saw 150,000 new jobs added that would have been a really big thing but 528 jobs added were more than double of the expectation of the Dow Jones or the analyst of Goldman Sachs where economists economist had an estimated non-farm payroll rise to be about 225,000 in July which would double now the hot payroll report means that feds will continue to increase interest rates in fight against high inflation. More people, more money is being spent. Last week, central bank raised rates by 75 basis points, which was last month, while another unusually large number increased. It says here, US inflation is sitting at a staggering 9.1%. And Powell said he, he is trying his best to bring inflation down to 3% by the end of next year. But if we're sitting at a 9.1% at the moment, then the job increases and the jobs are increasing at a domestic level. That simply means that we cannot expect the Feds to hike interest rates by a 0.50 basis point. The 0.75 basis point continuously being hiked this year is essential because that is the only way that they will be able to tackle inflation. Now, with that being said, the most important key contributing factors to look out for is the core C well is the CPI. The CPI is the consumer spending index, which is an indicator that the Fed used to measure and investors used to measure inflation. Whether this number increased or decreased, that doesn't change the fact that five hundred and twenty eight thousand jobs were added in the first place, meaning that they are going to hike the interest rates by a quarter base by zero point seven five, whether you like it or not, because inflation's high. There's no way anything lower than that would be essential. And once the Feds do that, this stock market is going to continue lower. The dollar index is going to continue higher. But that is what we need to wait for once the data becomes available. Up until then, we have factual information, factual data to make us understand and read why this is going to be the case and what we can expect moving forward there as well. I thank you for your time. And as always, cheers for years.